Are you ready for some really fun, fast and easy DIY bubble art to add to your junk journals? If so, I hope you will enjoy this technique and this fun video. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. The best thing is you probably have everything you need at home already. So we'll need some water some dishwashing liquid or liquid soap of some kind, some instant coffee or tea bags, and or some watercolors or acrylic paints or any other wa water soluble pigments. A bowl works really well, although you can also use like a deeper dish or a glass or a jar. I found the bowl works quite well because of the size. A straw. I have a glass straw here. You can also use a paper or plastic straw and a spoon is helpful or something to mix with. I'm going to start with my coffee mixture. This is the same instant coffee I use for coffee dyeing my papers for my journals. I am going to add a little more coffee than I usually would, but I don't measure. So I'm just going to add like a pretty good amount, as you can see here. It of course depends how dark you want your designs to be on your paper. The water I'm taking is, I would say, just about lukewarm. I didn't want it to be ice cold because it's just easier to dissolve the coffee when it's a bit warm. If you do this with tea instead of coffee, it probably makes sense to use boiled hot water. And you can just experiment with this. So I'm just mixing this so that it dissolves. You see it's a really nice dark mixture. And then I'm going to add some dishwashing liquid. Again, I'm not measuring. I'm just going to start with an amount. I guess that was maybe like two tablespoons roughly. And I will see if I can form bubbles or not. So that way I'll know do I need to add more or not. So then let's check if the mixture will work. So I'm going to take my straw and I'm gently going to blow into the liquids. So I'll immerse my straw end completely and gently blow into the liquid. And I'm going to stop as soon as the bubbles rise above the rim of the bowl. So as you can see, the mixture is great because the bubbles are forming beautifully. So now the fun part starts. So we're just going to take a piece of paper. I'm just taking regular white copy paper, 800 GSM. And I'm just going to hold my paper into the bubbles. They're popping already, so I will have to do that again. So if I just dab it once onto the bubbles, instantly, there we go. Isn't that a fun design? And you just keep doing that until you're happy with the amount you have on your page. In between each time, we have to get more bubbles again by blowing into the mixture. And then I'm just going to keep tapping into the mixture, see? And I just love the effect of the coffee. It's such a soft design. I have to give you one warning, it is super addictive. And it dries super quickly as well. You can even help the bubbles to pop if you want it to be faster. How cool does this look? So let's do a complete page. And I'll just kind of swipe over it. That works as well. How cool is this? I'm happy with this page and then obviously each page is going to be different and we can immediately also do the back side because as soon as your bubbles pop it's almost completely dry. I mean I can go over this nothing is going to move and you see you have different tone variations. We have some that are very dark, we have some that are lighter, each bubble is different, each blob is different. Each page is going to look so different. It comes through just the tiniest bit onto the back side. 
you can see here this of course we have because it is still a little bit wet so i think some of these rims will disappear here's a little bit of the coffee coming through but with regular copy paper not a lot will get through so let's immediately do the back side This is, of course, also something fun to do with kids. You might remember this from your kindergarten days or from your kids' school days. Oh, see here, I swiped it a bit too much, so I don't really have a lot of design, but that's okay. So within like two minutes, you have a very interesting looking journal page. How cool is that? I just wanted to try this quickly yesterday. And I think within like 15 or 20 minutes, I had like 20 papers front and back, different experiments. I could not stop. It's just so much fun. <laughs> I also wanted to see what this would look like if I would try this on paper which is already coffee dyed. So this is the paper that I tried it on. You see it looks very, very different. We don't really see those nice bubbles that we see on the paper that we just made. We have some designs like this, which are also interesting, but it just looks completely different. And this here is actually the back side and the front is not as pronounced so this is what the front looks like also interesting but i prefer the look more when it's done on the white paper directly and then i also wanted to try the avocado dyed paper so that's what this looks like also interesting but not as cool as on the white paper now i don't know why this difference occurs maybe because the surface of the paper has changed since it has already soaked up the coffee i don't know and of course we can also do this with different kind of papers we would add to our junk journals like book pages and again the effect will look different on every kind of paper it's going to be more subtle on the book page, of course, because the book page itself is already darker. And of course, the paper is different. It's more absorbent. Well, it depends on the book page, but I think this one is more absorbent than the copy paper. So there's a book page. Also really nice. Why not try it with an envelope? So I have a little tiny envelope here. Just going to open that. Do the same thing. How cool does this look? <laughs> it's so fun. And of course, we're not going to neglect the back side. I just love the surprise you're going to get every time. Maybe I'll do one more on the front. There. Or let's try a Filofax card or a Rolodex card. Super cool. Let's do the back side as well because I can't stop. <laughs> there. I love it. Let's try one of these as well. This is a little more cream colored. And when you're done with the mixture, you can just put it into a glass jar where you can close the lid and keep it for the next time you want to play with it. Let's try some with acrylic paint. I'm going to use my Jade Green, my favorite paint. I'll just add a bit in here. Then I'll add a bit of dishwashing liquid and a bit of water, or maybe a little more. 
Just to make it easier with the straw, I'm just going to use my bone folder to stir this. Let's see if I added enough of the dishwashing liquid. Yes, it looks like I did. So let's first try it on maybe one of these small envelopes again. I have not tried this color yet and it might be too light. Yeah, you can barely see it. Yeah, I think I might need to use a stronger color. This color is definitely not strong enough. So I'll need to add some more color to that. I'll add some of this thalo turquoise. Oops. Let's mix that up again. Okay, I don't think that was enough. Okay, let's try this mixture. This is going to be better. It's still light, but it's better. Let's try it on the back side because this one was wet from before, so I think it's not working as well. Let's try it on the dry back side. Yeah, that's better. You see that? Let's try that on one of these kind of tab pages or divider pages. Yeah, that's beautiful. So you need a dry surface. That's another learning. And here we see the paper was completely different and you see it soaks up the liquid a lot more. So we're not getting these pronounced bubble images like we do here. You see how much more fuzzy and thick these are than these? It's so interesting. Every paper is going to give you different results. I still think it looks cool though. Let's try this on the book page. Yep, that works as well. Light but cute. <laughs> Let's also try this with some watercolor. I'm going to use some highly pigmented colors. These are white nights and I'm going to try this beautiful purple. So I'll add the watercolor first. Actually, let's add some water first. I think that makes more sense. So obviously the higher pigmented your colors are, the less of it you will need. This is beautiful already. Let's squirt in some dishwashing soap. Give that a stir. And try it out. Let's try it with white paper first. I think we see it best. Hmm, not working. Okay, this is super faint, even though my water is pigmented so highly. Do you see that? It's like a very, very pale lilac. Wow, this is surprising. Okay, we need to do something about that. I have some purple in the color Villainous Potion in the Distress Oxide Reinker. Let's see what happens if we add some of this in here. We can already see that the foam has turned purple, so this will definitely work. Yes, this is working a lot better. I'm assuming the same would work with the inks. So that definitely looks cool as well. This is very fun. Let's add some to this card that we've already added the coffee to. Let's see what the mixture looks like. Oh, that looks amazing. Okay, that's really fun. I love that. Let's do the other side as well. Oh, we have some here already. So that's a beautiful combination, coffee and purple bubbles. <laughs> okay, there's one more that I want to try. These are acrylic inks. 
add some water in here. Let's drop some in here. Add our dishwashing soap. And give that a mix. The bubbles are pretty white, so I don't actually think this is going to work. Maybe let's stir it first a little more. This is going to be pink, it looks like. <laughs> Maybe if we add a little more. This should be better. Yep, now it's a little more red. So let's see different ways of how we can use all these gorgeous papers. The first thing I want to do is I want to send this beautiful card from Vienna from our famous Ferris wheel, which is also the landmark of Vienna to my dear, dear friend, Louise Heinzel. Hello, Louise. When this video is out, she has this card already. And I don't want to send it as it is. I want to send it in an envelope. So this is an envelope that I did yesterday with exactly the same method. I just put it under some heavy books for a few hours while it was still damp. And so now it's nice and flat. So let's just add a little decoration on the envelope. So the address obviously needs to go here. The stamp needs to go here. So probably the best place to add something small is down here. I want to add something that I already have in my stash. I don't want to produce anything new. So I'm going to go into my tin of all my little ephemera pieces, which is way too full. So hopefully I'll find something nice to put here as a focal point. Some flowers would be nice. These might work. Oh, these are cute. Maybe I'll go for those. These are gorgeous. But they need a lot more fussy cutting because I don't want to add them like this. They do have a beautiful color though. Hmm. I do like how bright these are. Let me cut these out a little better. Okay, I think that's much better. So these can go here. And, and there's actually a reason behind why I chose this image, Louise. You know it, obviously. So before I went to go visit Louise together with Honey, I asked her what I could bring her from Vienna. And she said she wanted the Ferris wheel. <laughs> So, Luise, you're finally getting your Ferris wheel. Jetzt hast du endlich dein Riesenrad, Luise. <laughs> and Luise loves purple as well because she uses it a lot in her journals. And I still have my purple mixture here. So let's try adding it some on this butterfly as well. This is made out of paper. It's very subtle, but it's there. I dried this quickly with my heat gun and since it's very lilac now instead of the deep purple that I actually want, I'm going to use my deep purple watercolor here to maybe edge it a little bit with that. I've never tried that actually with watercolor. I have ordered that ink pad as well. I only have the re-inker for now, but it's not here yet. So for now, I'll just have to do this and hope that it works. Wow. It almost looks black. <laughs> well, we know Louise likes grungy, so I almost want to just spray this and make this run to give it the grungy effect. But, but the problem is, well, actually, I might just do that because why not? I was thinking that we won't see the bubble design on it anymore, but we have the bubble design on the envelope. So why not just make this super purple and fun and grungy? This is what it looks like when it's dry and it's absolutely beautiful. It 
kind of hides too much behind the flowers if I add it behind them. It disappears too much in front is also too much or I'm going to get rid of this one flower here. <laughs> Not sure that was a good decision. <laughs> Let's try a different route. Maybe we get rid of the flower. I definitely want to keep the purple grungy butterfly and I want to add some crackling stamping on it. I will link this for you in the description box, but please remember it comes unmounted. So when you order this, you only get the orange part and not the foam. You will have to order that separately on that same site or another site, obviously. But Crafty Individual has that as well. Okay, it's quite subtle, but it's there. I really would have liked the combination of the yellow and the purple because that looks so awesome together because they are complementary colors. But maybe there's another way we can add the yellow. I have here a scrap of kitchen towel that I used to soak up a mess that I made with some spilled vintage photo distress oxide and it turns into this beautiful gold yellow. So maybe this will look cool behind it. Yes, and I think it does. And then I want to add some deep purple thread that I actually received from Louise. <laughs> I want that underneath. It's not the same purple, but I wanted to use purple instead of black. Yes. So I've glued everything on and I've added matte medium over the kitchen towel because I want to make sure that it really stays on there. If I were to put this in my junk journal, I would not have glued down the butterfly as flat as I did, but since this is going with the mail, I want to be sure that it doesn't come off, so it's completely flat. I've inked up the edges with my walnut stain, front and back. I love that we have this also on the inside of the envelope and as a final touch I am of course going to add some golden splatters otherwise Louise wouldn't recognize it's from me <laughs> so as soon as this is dry it's ready for me to put the address on and I can add my card these are some of the papers I tried yesterday and this greenish yellow that you see here is from this watercolor from my tube and this is a green gold and this worked so I don't know why the purple today didn't work maybe because the consistency of a watercolor from a tube is different than from the palette I don't know it's very strange but this worked very well I love this little cluster right here or you can see it really well here you see all these tiny bubbles so it works I don't know what happened today but I wanted to show you what these would look like in combination with regular coffee dyed pages in your journal I have a few here which are just plain boring coffee dyed <laughs> nothing special so if we put these in between i think that's gonna look amazing and then obviously we imagine some more different papers inside maybe some book pages oh we have some here actually so this is one of the ones from yesterday you see the bubbles are subtle but they are there and they're fun so let's add that as well maybe an envelope this is again one i did yesterday so you see i mean how nice is this you have some plain ones you have some more interesting ones so now i don't even mind that some of these are just super plain because it's nice to have some calm pages next to some more fun and interesting pages. 
I just love how these look. This is definitely my new favorite technique and I love the effect best with coffee. It's just super, super fun. Another fun way to add them is by doing what I'm going to do now. So I, yesterday I also played with these two envelopes, which are junk mail envelopes. One of them has a window, one does not. They're both open here. This one here had a logo from the company that sent it in the front. So before I used this technique, I just glued a piece of white copy paper on top. So that hit it completely. On this one, I don't really mind the writing. That's fine. You, I think it's fine to see that it is a junk mail envelope. And we're just going to join these in the middle. So if I were to add them to my current signature, I would first check the height and this, and I see that this is actually too tall. So in this case, I would just trim them down. Then you can just put glue here on the top to close them up again, but you could also just leave them like this and have it be more of a tuck spot than a pocket. To join them, you could just use a strip of paper that you glue on the front and I would also glue it on the back side. You could use washi tape, but I would definitely add some glue to the washi tape if you're going to do that. You could use masking tape, you could use a piece of a book page. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch the top closed and probably I'll stitch the bottom as well just so that they look equal. And then I'm going to use a zigzag stitch and just stitch right across the line here. And that way they will be joined. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine. So you see, I just joined them in the middle here with my zigzag stitch. They move perfectly. They are secure. That was quick and easy, no gluing. And then I just sewed the top and the bottom. So now we have two fun envelope pockets that we can add to a signature. Maybe right here. Just like that. And we can obviously decorate it further. We can put something fun in here to see through the window. Yeah, and that was really simple. And it looks great, I think. If for some reason you don't want to make these kind of papers yourself, but you like the look of them, you can check out the link below. I will digitalize some of my papers, but I do want to encourage you to just have fun and play around yourself because I had so much fun with it that I want you to experience the same. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.